Hang on a sec. There's a new set of wheels that have arrived at the door. So what's the problem? I'm pretty sure I'm answering the door to like a new set of wheels every week at the moment. <laughs> what is going on? I'm just being creative. Welcome back to the disc break series. No, to the Friday vlog series. Where today? Number one, somehow I've ended up with a lot of Chinese carbon wheels. Number two, there was a bit of a standoff between my bike shop, Trilogy Cycles, and SRAM. Didn't have the BMC for almost two months, which I want to go into. So, let's get into it. So we have some creative carbon. This bloke's a show off. Wheel sets that have just arrived. Nicely packaged. Some treats, some tires. Lovely little treat. GP5000 STR. Thank you for the treat, creative. So these are the Creative Carbon 45 millimeter wheels that have just arrived and they're from a Melbourne based company called Creative Cycles Workshop that apparently have some of the lightest wheels on the market. We'll stick these on the scale shortly and see how they compare to the Caden. Where are they? Over there. 45 millimeter carbon decadence wheels. Next. From Singapore, the Ascent Polaris Carbon. I think these are 69 millimeters. A lot of length. Oh, look at this little bag. Oh, these little goodies. Tubes. Thank you very much, Ascent. So these carbon wheels, if you're into YouTube, you'll know have recently been reviewed by Hambini and he identified there was an issue with the carbon spokes delaminating, but apparently it's been resolved with CX Ray spokes. But as you can see, the spokes no longer carbon spokes in there. And interestingly, oh, Hambini found the same issue with these KPS carbon wheels, which have a great sounding hub. Going up here, that one's okay. This one's gone and that's what's happening on the other wheels. And that is because the spokes on the KPS wheel, the carbon spokes were exact same carbon spokes that were on the Ascent wheel. So clearly there was an issue with those particular carbon spokes, but moving forward and now on these wheels, we've replaced the carbon spokes with CX Ray spokes. So the issue has been resolved according to KPS and also according to Ascent wheels and riding these wheels this morning, they're feeling the goods, but it's interesting speaking to Josh, who I have a relationship with from KPS in Melbourne. Doesn't matter how much testing you do with formal testing protocols, it's not until you get these wheels out to people in the real world, under real world circumstances, do they truly get tested. But issue resolved and looking forward to getting the review out on these KPS 60 millimeter carbon rims shortly. Next, Caden Decadence carbon 45 millimeter rims. These are the only rims that I paid for out of my own pocket. Next, we have the Vortex 60 millimeter, no compromise carbon wheels. Good sounding wheel, which are now running true the off center bearing seat. So these are two other rear wheels. The third one's now on the bike. These two had issues with the bearing seat, which was in the hub, which was causing this oscillation. If you missed that video, I'll link to it up there. But that issue has now been resolved. So everyone hanging out for the Seeker long-term review, that'll be coming in the next two to three weeks. Next, these are the quietest hub. And look at that, we've had so much rain up here on the Sunshine Coast recently. That, my friends, is what you call a Schwab Marathon. Stops you from getting punches. And they are the cheapest rim of them all. 670 USD dollars off the top of my head, which is a pretty good deal for those wheels. We'll be talking more about them shortly. And the last wheel are the Hyper 50 millimeter carbon rims, which I don't actually have on me right now. They're with Aaron at Trilogy Cycles, who's doing a tech assessment on the rims and the hubs for a comparison review I was planning to publish soon. So a lot more detail will be coming on these carbon wheels in future videos, but why do I have all these carbon wheels, which is kind of like the purpose of this video? Well, first of all, let me quickly explain to some of you out there that might be asking about the three-way comparison I proposed in October last year, being the Hypers versus the Cadence versus the ICANs. What I neglected at the time of that video is the weather conditions were changing. We were transitioning into spring and then into summer where we have a lot of wind and rain. And as you know, on the channel, I like to incorporate speed tests into my reviews and the weather conditions just weren't practical. And then I had a bit of time off. Just get on with it, mate. No one cares for excuses. The channel, but now it's winter. Uh, we're ready to roll. 
with this comparison, but here's the slight issue that I'm yet to resolve. That being the Winspace Hyper 50s. I'm not sure if they're gonna be out of date anytime soon because Winspace have just launched an updated 2023 model. So I am reluctant to spend 10 to 15 hours on a project, which is what these projects take me in time on a wheel set that could be outdated anytime soon. I've emailed Winspace and asked them if they're gonna be updating their 50 millimeter version and I'm yet to hear back. And I kind of wonder whether I will because I don't think there's much love there anymore, which is ironic considering everyone originally thought I was in bed with that brand, but time will tell. So how did I end up with this many sets of Chinese carbon rims in a short period of time? Well, as a cycling, YouTuber. We're pretty much bottom of the barrel when it comes to making money. In fact, I've got a video coming out shortly. I'm going to share with you exactly how much money I earn from YouTube. But flip the coin. The cool side is we get the opportunity or brands come to us saying, we'll give you a product in return for a shout out or for a review, which is pretty cool. In fact, not a day goes by where I don't get an email from a brand saying, could you review or shout out the product? However, you don't wanna say yes to everything because it takes time to review a product or even shout something out. And you, the audience, what I've figured out over time through mistakes is I reckon you've got maybe one or two opportunities to mention something or shout something out before people generally start to get pretty pissed off and I can appreciate why. So these days, I knock most things back, but carbon wheels, my friends, I think they hit the sweet spot for a cycling YouTube, a reason being for a brand to part ways with a set of wheels. I don't think it's a huge investment. There's not a lot of risk there. If it doesn't turn out, we can write that one off. But I think there's pretty good upside. And for a cycling YouTuber such as myself or any cyclist out there, it's pretty cool to be able to test different carbon rims because outside of the frame set, carbon rims are by far the biggest impact or change you can make to your road bike. So in summary, I am a sucker for carbon wheels and we've got a shitload of reviews <laughs> that will be coming on the channel over the next four to six months. Now there's a couple of wheels that I haven't weighed yet, the Ascent and the Creatives. So let's go do that now. So I have not used my fish weigher from boating, camping and fishing for a number of months and I think it's cooked. I think I'm gonna to have to go get another one. Yeah. NBCF, I'll be back. So the hidden cost of running a cycling YouTube channel set me back another $38, I think it was. You can see that is alive and well. You love a weigh-in, it's been a while, hasn't it? Tired old boy these days. Give us something. So one thing that's super noticeable between these two rims outside of the fact one's 45 and one's 69, one's 35 millimeters wide, that is the ascent wheel. And the other one is 27 millimeter wide. That is the Creative. And the Creative Hub is a extra light. And the Polaris is a DT Swiss Hub. And both ready for tubeless tires, although I'll be putting a tube in mine because I've had bad experiences with tubeless tires for a very long period of time. So the acclaimed weight on the Creative wheels is 1,205 grams. 1,190. There you go. 11.90, I've done that three times now. So I can't recall out of the gate what the cadence were, but I'll put that on the screen somewhere. Ascent, 69. So they have an acclaimed weight of 1,600 grams. Obviously, they're definitely gonna be heavier because there's more material. 16.35, so a little bit heavier than the acclaimed. So I'm not gonna weigh all the wheels that I've showed you just previously because I've done that in previous videos. So I'll put those numbers up on the screen and let's get into part two of this video. Hey, if you're getting any value or enjoyment out of this video, could you please give it a like? I know old mate wouldn't, but it really does help the channel out and I'd greatly appreciate it. So the BMC Team Machine, I'm getting a few questions on this one as well as the Seeker. When's the long-term review coming soon? Because I finally have it back. It's been at my local bike shop for two months over two months because of the rear derailleur. And essentially since I've had the bike, I've had issues with the gears changing without me doing anything. It's kind of like the rear derailleur has a mind of its own and I put up with it for quite some time. It's had so many other things going on, but I thought for the long-term review, I need to get this fixed. So I took it into Aaron at Trilogy Cycles who built the bike up, they tested everything, agreed there was an issue and sent it off to SRAM with this video. See that when I did that hmm? double? 
Shram then rejected the claim, saying that the derailleur was okay, it was possibly due to improper bike setup, and let's face it, that probably happens a lot. So Aaron took the derailleur back. He then went the extra mile. He rejected their claim. He took photos of the bike with everything being set up, more video footage, sent it to Shram, sent the derailleur back, and then they agreed it was a derailleur issue and sent me a brand new rear derailleur. So the moral of the story is, Thank you to SRAM, firstly, for saving me six to $800, and more importantly, Aaron, for going the extra mile. And, you know, he could have wiped his hands with it and said, sorry, SRAM, I sent it back, we can't do anything, but he didn't do that. And it just goes to show having a good relationship with a good quality bike shop can go a very long way. I'll catch you in the next video.